How's everyone doing? Good? Happy to hear it. All right, so what in the world is virtual reality? Now, my name is Masashi Schaefer, and I'm a computer engineering and computer science student here at Seattle University. And to a lot of people's surprise, I do more than just study computers. Sometimes I build stuff with them. And in particular, last summer, I started getting involved with what are called hackathons. And for those of you who don't know what a hackathon is, it's basically where a bunch of nerds like myself lock ourselves in a room for an entire weekend and survive on nothing but sugar, caffeine, and free pizza. Because as a college student, free food is basically what keeps me alive. Now, hackathons usually have a purpose. It's where you're trying to solve an issue using normally technology or some sort of innovative way. And in particular, this hackathon focused on education and virtual reality and how we can utilize this new technology to help enhance our education in the schools. So my team and I, we decided to develop a sort of experience that you could actually step into and become part of. It was a story. And as you interacted with this story, you had this narration. And we focused on third grade common core standards, and more particularly, verb tense. And according to Google, which, you know, because who remembers verb tense and what that means, it's basically using language to tell time, so past, present, future, and those indications within our language structure. So what we had was, we had the student step into the story, and as they interacted with the story, we had a narrator come on, and the narrator would then emphasize on certain keywords to indicate whether what they're doing is part of the present, or maybe something they had done before in the past, or something maybe they should do in the future. And through this, we had our auditory reinforcement. Now on top of that, we had a visual reinforcement. And this came in the form of the sentence that the narrator was saying popped up in front of them. And from that, we highlighted the certain keywords with a different color depending on whether it was past, present, or future. And from this, we now have the auditory and the visual reinforcement in learning. Now lastly, I've already mentioned this one, but you don't really realize it until you point it out. It's the physical interaction. Because you're there, interacting with the story around you, being a part of it. And from that, we had our third reinforcement of learning. So now we're able to have the auditory, the visual, and the physical reinforcements all engaging the student at once. And with this, we actually received the ca uh, winning category for best integration of virtual reality technology and learning. Now, some of you have maybe seen virtual reality, but I'm, some are also just very unfamiliar with it. Basically, it's that thing that goes against all the times your parents said you're sitting too close to the TV, because now we're strapping that screen about an inch away from your eyes. Or you see it as the viral video on Facebook of grandma freaking out in her chair because she thinks she's on a roller coaster. Or maybe the last one where it's the guy at the Best Buy stand who all of a sudden just falls smack face forward into the display because he you know, lost track of where he was. But what's common between all of these interactions? Why do we have such a high emotional response to virtual reality? And this comes from the idea of presence. And presence is how much you feel like you're actually there in the moment. An example of what this is a good comparison is, imagine staring at a picture of the pyramids in a textbook or on a screen, seeing a picture of it. Now imagine standing there beneath the pyramids, looking up at its vastness. Which is more engaging, the picture or being there? And this is where virtual reality really separates itself from other forms of media right now. is because you can actually stand there in front of it. You can look up at the pyramids and feel as if you're actually there, not just looking at it through a book. And what people have found is that presence and emotion are highly correlated, and they come together. So the more presence you feel, the higher of an emotional response you have. Let's put it in this way. Imagine watching a protest on the TV or reading about it in the newspaper. Depending on who you are, you may have an emotional response. It may incite some feelings in you. But now imagine actually standing there in the middle of that protest. Imagine being there surrounded by the passion, looking to your right and seeing people full of just conviction. 
to your left the same. It's gonna affect you differently. You're gonna be more emotionally attached to what's going on because you're there. And this is where the power of virtuality can come in. It's because you have this high level of presence, which means you have this great emotional connection to it. It separates itself from other forms of media. It's not just reading pages of a book. It's not just watching a video online. Because no matter how engaging a video may be, no matter how much it draws you in closer, all of a sudden, you hit something. There's something separating you from what you're looking at and yourself. And in this case, it's a physical barrier. It's called the screen. It's a window that you have to look through from the outside. So there's always this last little bit of disconnect between you and the subject of what you're trying to view. But what's different is that with virtual reality, you can literally break through that. You can stand there in the middle of it, be a part of it, interact with it, and be more emotionally connected to it. Now, even with that virtual reality, it still may be hard to kind of picture, right? So how about we do this? Who wants to try going to space? Yeah? Anyone? OK. How about this? Right there. <laughs> come up. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a live demo of what VR can actually do. So come up this way, actually, because we have cords here. Again, computer. I do computers. That's that. So OK. So what was your name? Sepia. Sepia? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. So here's what we're going to have you do. We are basically, have you ever been to space before? No. Oh, well, OK. Um, <laughs> Another question is, are you allergic to bees? No. Are you allergic to peanut butter? No. Okay, that really doesn't matter, but I mean, like, good to check. <laughs> okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to unstrap this, and we're going to put it on your head. Okay. You're going to put it on. I'm going to tighten it up, and we're going to make it until it's nice and snug. That way you can see. And with your right hand, there's a little knob underneath here, which you can use to adjust the lids with. Okay? okay? Cool. Let's go for this. Go ahead and like, pull that down. It's just easier and less awkward that way. Cool. All right, so move your hands. OK, now adjust the lens width until it's nice and pretty crisp, crisp image. Right here? Yeah. Okay. All right, how's that looking? Is it pretty good? Mm -hmm. OK. So in terms of like interacting with this, you can walk around. And if you see a blue fence, don't run into it, because you might fall stage. Okay. But actually, no, you'll find you have to give you lots of space. OK, so here's what's going to happen. Walk forward a bit. All right, cool. Now look up to your left and try and find the sun. Now look around you. Turn around. That's the International Space Station. And you're in the middle of space. So we're going to try one little thing extra. I'm going to let you try and move around a bit. Okay. So with your left hand, I'm going to hand you a controller. Or sorry, yes. <laughs> and right here, there's going to be a little joystick. So you're going to press forward on it and it will move you around. But you're going to move in the direction that you look. So if you want to go towards the space station, look towards it. Now move forward. You can completely turn your body, too. It will help with the orientation. And then press forward on the joystick. And you can start to fly around. So maybe go slow, because momentum really builds in space. <laughs> you're going to crash into it. You'll be OK. Don't worry. <laughs> you're doing great. Feel free to explore around. Look around for a bit. So with virtual reality, you can explore space. You can go around. And as you can tell, you kind of get lost in your own world. How is it? Good, good. <laughs> All right, now let's try this. With your right hand, I'm going to hand you this. Okay. And this is going to be the trigger. So that's this and the grip, which is on the side. Now, if you go towards the space station, reach out with your right hand. You can see it, right? Yeah. And grab the space station. You can grab onto it. So fly towards it, and then try and grab onto the space station. Oh, squeeze. Oh, you almost got it. All right, try it again, round two. Maybe not so fast. Go on. So fast. All right, so try and grab with your right hand. Just reach out. So the trigger and the grip. So don't knock that. This and this. OK? Don't use your thumb. Don't worry about it. Hey, there you go. Hey. Now you're actually interacting with this virtual world. You're literally grabbing onto it. And if you want, you can climb around or even like launch yourself off by pulling and letting go. 
Just have fun. <laughs> or you can go back to the jetpack, you know, whatever's more approachable. <laughs> Awesome. All right. As much fun as space is, we have a limited time, and I'm going to have to bring you back to Earth. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So you can feel free to take the headset off now. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. So why does this matter? So. On top of working with computers, I also work at a middle school every single week. And there I work either individually in small groups or in an after school program with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Mainly sixth and seventh. Eighth graders are there every now and then. But I remember whenever I start my day, I try and have a nice interaction with the student. I try and ask him, How's your day been? How's your weekend? Or if there's some activity that I know is happening at the school, I ask them about it. And that's because I'm trying to build a connection with the student. Because with the connection, it's easier to engage them. And when you have the engagement, they can learn. So these are the steps that I try and go through whenever I work with them. And I remember one week, the school had gone on a field trip to the zoo. And so I was working with the student individually. And I grabbed them out of a sixth grade math class. And we start heading to the library to go work on, our, on the math. And I start to do that, trying to build a connection. So knowing that they had gone on a field trip, I asked, hey, how was the field trip to the zoo? And I won't forget the response that I got. Because with sad, sunken shoulders, she said, I didn't get to go. Now, this wasn't because the student got in trouble. It wasn't because they were a bad student. It, wasn't even, it was because of outside factors that the student couldn't control. It was due to an outside force, a limitation due to what's accessible for them. And this is something that we see all too often in education, a lack of accessibility. Outside forces affecting how their education and experiences in the school system are. This can be not just a field trip, but maybe the school's funding. Maybe a lab doesn't have enough materials to do the experiment that students have been excited for all year. Maybe it's the disconnect between the educators and the students, therefore you can't have that connection. Maybe it's because you have an English language learner who's trying to juggle both their at-home life and culture and the one that they're forced to in the school, and the educators don't necessarily have that connection between them. How many of you work in education? Any hands? Or how many of you experience any sort of interaction with education? Mostly everyone, right? All right, so then you understand education and its resources are very limited. So let's go back to that whole thing of why does virtual reality matter? It matters because of that idea of presence and that idea of emotion and how if we can utilize that emotional connection that you have to something, you're building that connection. And as you have the three different aspects of engagement, you have the engagement. And from that, you can have the learning. So I want to encourage you to think about this for a second. Imagine if a school had a lab full of VR headsets that maybe once a week a student could come into and have as like a normal routine that they get to do. What if now instead of being limited to field trips that are maybe twice a year, you have a lab where you can go and explore the world? What if for that student who necessarily have the at-home support to get them onto that field trip, now we bring that to them? And instead of being limited to the places you can drive to in a single day, you can literally go to space. You can go underwater. You can explore different planets, different cultures, go to the pyramids, even imaginary worlds that someone else has created. This is all possible with virtual reality. What if we could engage students who are English language learners? Now let me ask you this. If I were to hold a water bottle right here, and you hold it in front of you, you're gonna know that it's water. You're gonna know that it's a bottle full of liquid that you can drink from. Now imagine virtual reality, being able to hold that up, interact with it, and then having a text pop up saying this is a water bottle, but both in the language you're trying to learn and the one that you're familiar with. We're bridging that gap. We're connecting the students to their education. And we're teaching them in a different way. And this is why it matters. 
It's a new form of engagement, a new form of learning. We create the connection, we have the emotion, we have the engagement, and from there, we can learn. Imagine being in a science lab and being able to do a giant catapult just to test physics. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure if I built a giant catapult at my school, I would get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> but in VR, it allows you to have opportunities like that, that level of engagement that's unique. Now, unfortunately, education is never really an early adopter of technology. Anyone who's had experience in education knows that funding is limited, and it's hard to get the resources that you need. But let me propose it to you in this way. How many of you in this audience have a smartphone in their pocket? Let me show you show of hands, right? Nearly everyone. Now, how many of you knew that as of June, it will have been a decade since the first iPhone came out? So that's 10 years. In 10 years, we went from not even knowing the concept of what a smartphone is, to now every single person, pretty much, in this room having one in their pockets. Now let's continue this. Right now, this is expensive. It is. It's for early adopters. It's for those that can afford it. And that's not education. But imagine 10 years from now. Where are we going to be? What's going to be the new device that's in our pocket? What is it going to be capable of? Because right now, we already have VR on the phones. Some of you may have even tried it out there. Sure, it's not the same level of this. But what it means is that we're on our way for it to be more accessible more available to everyone. And right now, it's on us as the educators, as the people with ideas, as the innovators, as those who care about the future of our children to understand that VR is more than just gaming. It's a way that we can engage people in new, meaningful ways to get them emotionally connected to the experiences that they're trying to learn from. Because we have the connection, we have the engagement, and from that, we have the learning. So I challenge you today to try and help shape the direction that we move to show that it's more than just gaming, but instead, we can use it to help engage, teach, and shape our upcoming generations. Thank you.